G'day folks. Oh, this afternoon's quick little autopsy. We have three instantaneous water heaters or continuous water heaters. We've got two identical Bosch units and a mystery unit. Uh, they all work on the same principle with a gas burner, temperature senders and a heat exchanger. A nice big copper one. Uh, we've got a gas valve. Uh, no, that's gas valve in there. Which I think is that. Yep, that's gas valve. That's water valving. Uh, inlet and outlet. Temperature control. Which looks like it's been leaking. That's been leaking. Uh, same deal with this one and this one. Yeah, central port is gas. And the two side ones are inlet and outlet. There's some operating instructions. Uh, what does that say? Everdure SD27, that's what that is. So it's designed for low pressure gas, natural. Um, yeah. 1987, it's done pretty well. 87 model. Nice big tinned copper big heat exchanger. Uh, Jay the Aussie brought these home one day. Well, he donated them anyway. Trash find. Piso doesn't work. Yeah, there's a bit of wind going on out here, so bear with me. I just want to get these things stripped down and out of here, running out of room. Or at least not room, I just want to make it tidy. So anyway, we've got burner settings and things. This one's all seized up. It's had water and shit get into the gas valve. You can see a little burner rack. The burner rack wouldn't be bad to hang on to. A bit of fun. But yeah, this is how they should be made. These things last like, uh, was it 9945 manufacturing date? Uh, 94, fifth month, perhaps. Oh, of course, Bosch, division of uh, Junkers. You ever see a uh, water heater around with Hugo Junkers logo on it? It's the same sort of, well, assimilated by the same company, but yeah, Hugo Junkers made awesome gas heaters after the war. Probably one of the only companies that was still operating after the war. Oh, look, someone's disconnected the uh, thermocouple, so they've been troubleshooting it. Maybe the thermocouple is stuffed or the valve itself is stuffed. And that should go somewhere. Doesn't really show where that's supposed to go, maybe no. No, that screws in somewhere, that's part of the uh, pilot light sustain. Once this probe gets hot it'll keep the pilot light on. If the gas burner goes out this will cool down and shut the gas off completely. It's a safety feature. They all need them. Stuck. Yeah, Water Wizard 600, Water Wizard 780, 960. Uh, it's a 780. So, yeah. Not a bad unit. They do last very long. A lot better than the modernised, uh, overcomplicated electronic ones like the Rinai that I autopsied a while ago. But, yeah, let's tear one of these apart and have a closer look at some of its parts. Okay, so these two are a little bit different to each other, but they operate in the same principle. Uh, this is the cold input. goes into this block here. When you turn on the hot tap, the pressure drops in the line and the gas, or well, pressure in here drops, the gas valve opens up and the burner lights up. So as water starts flowing through it, the burner will light up and start heating the water. It's just, it's a very simple system. That's an L a TF325LP, 1TR, so uh, that one there's a TF250LP3TH, so they're do definitely different units. Yeah, Robert Bosch Australia, division of Junkers Germany, there's all the specs on it.
yeah, I'll get one of these burner racks out and we'll uh, do a proper autopsy on the table. Probably that one there since it hasn't had water going through it. This one looks like it's had water leak up into the block and everything. Hence why, well some of this still works. But this is the worst one. You can see corrosion around all the valve block and everything. This one's in much better condition. And it has a uh, temperature sender on the uh, top of the heat exchanger as well. A little bit different. Hmm. I think that's the igniter. Yeah, it's best to go to that spark plug there. Anyway, let's rip this thing apart and get the rest of it on the trailer. This one's exactly the same, it just has a uh, rotary controller. Which is also stuck. Not the best. And Piso doesn't work anyway. Yeah, this is, this is the oldest one of the lot. It's done pretty well. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. I'm gonna love having a nine inch grinder around. Just cut the studs off the back, knock it all apart. Same with those ones there, they were uh, holding the gas block in. Just ground them off from the back of the panel. And as you can see, we have water and gas control. Uh, yeah, this will be the one that I autopsy. The other one's full of moisture and corrosion and other crap. Uh, but they all work on the same principle. It's an adjuster or something for the gas flow. And the heat exchanger, which is quite cracked. These are all tinned copper, domestic copper. I think it's about $5 a kilo. There isn't an awful lot here, but it's probably about 50 bucks worth. So they are worth collecting if you can find them. You can see the color change there. There's probably a water leak, a rupture in the tubing. That's very typical of the very old ones. Hence why there's so much corrosion in this. Yeah, I'd say that heat exchanger is ruptured at one point. That one there's fine. Probably an electronic problem. That one there. Don't really know. Although well, there's a very white spot there. I typically find they go white where there's a bit of moisture coming up through from a ruptured pipe. Yeah, interesting things. A lot of oxide, a lot of corrosion, water leaks. Anyway, I'll do a detailed autopsy on that one a little bit later. I just want to get this mess cleaned up right now. So, I hope you all enjoyed it. A bit of a insight into how these uh, instantaneous water heaters work. Yeah, I kind of ran out of memory, but you get the gist of it. Um, yeah, I'll clean up this mess. I'll have a play around with that one. And uh, thanks for watching. They are a good source of scrap metal. I'll be going Harvey's with Jay the Aussie. He's the guy who brought them in. So, yeah, make a few bucks out of it. It's not bad for a roadside find. Thanks for watching. Uh, one last little bit, I guess. Since I've decided to take the valve body apart for the br brass base, uh, this is the 1984 oddball one. The black one, can't remember what it's actually called. Uh, yeah, you can see that diaphragm is pretty much rooted, like really bad, or completely blown out. So there would have been, there's water getting into the gas valve assembly, and it probably would have neutralized pressure, bled out through the side of the valve block, and simply not heated. Like, without pressure to operate the gas valve, it would have just done nothing. It would have got cold water and a lot of water pouring out the bottom of the unit because of that. So, yeah, it's dead. <laughs>
and there's a bit of copper and brass, which is awesome. Although, there is a diaphragm there, but I can see a tiny tear in the corner there. Yeah, no, that thing is a mess. So anyway, I'll, that, that one now guarantees the same deal, it's just full of water, but the other one we'll do a full autopsy on a little bit later. So thanks for watching, and I'll continue chopping these up and get them out of the way.